Yeah, I'm pretty sure y'all knew I was going to have to go live. I was at work. Couldn't even finish work. I'm sitting at work. Look. Hard work. I have to work hard every day. Nothing comes to me easy. I've been doing this ever since I left Bad Boy. And I've been doing it on my own. I've been doing it on my own. Working hard every day. Getting up. Busting my butt. You know what I'm saying? And I do it. I do it. Look. Now I'm sure y'all know and they done raided the man house. They over at P. Diddy house, man. Raiding the house. I'm not saying I wanted this kind of stuff to happen, but should have known one day. Mama should have told him one day it was going to be a day like this, man. That you cannot keep doing what you're doing the way he was doing it. Man, it was destined to happen pretty soon. What's up, everybody? This is the world famous Ed Lover, and you are watching Forgotten Kings TV. That's right. Forgotten Kings TV. Come on, son. The search for Diddy continues after reports came out earlier today that Diddy's homes in L.A., Miami, and New York were raided by federal agents. Yes, you heard that correctly. Since the release of this news, a lot of people have been taking to social media to give their reaction. One person in particular is former Bad Boy artist Mark Curry. For those who may not know, Mark Curry was signed to Bad Boy in the late 90s. And of course, he was one of the first people to tell his story about being signed to Bad Boy, right? Working with Diddy and everything he's seen while being in the music industry. Now, again, for those who may not know, Mark Curry put out a book, all right, titled Dancing with the Devil. How Puff Burned the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. Now, if you want to purchase this book, I'll make sure to leave the link in the description. Actually, uh, Mark has asked me to give away two copies of this book. So if you can, just leave a comment down below. Um, I guess giving your best bad boy moment, man. I know given the situation of everything going on with Diddy, um, you know, we can't negate the fact of, you know, Bad Boy and his history and all of the many artists who helped contribute to that run over in Bad Boy. So, like I said, give me your best Bad Boy records moments, you know what I mean, in the comment section below. And you can uh, get a copy of Mark Curry's book, Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burned the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. But like I said, I don't want to hold you guys up any much longer. Mark Curry will be reacting to the news of Diddy's House raided by federal agents man like i said things have uh, gotten real serious for diddy and his family and right now everyone is uh waiting to see what's next when it comes to diddy and all of this controversy so make sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below my name is sensei rip till next time peace <laughs> Oh yeah. We can talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. <clears throat> What's going on? 56 people in here. This is just what I like. Hey Amen. Let's go. Hey Amen. Craig Mack and Black Rob did not live to see this moment. And this was a moment like, I'm telling you, Craig Mack was so, he was so furious with Puff. He was just, he hated Puff so much that the, I used to have to calm Puff, I mean Craig down. Like, Craig, just chill out. Let's go record a couple of songs and, you know, let's just chill out, man. We, we, we was on tour. We was like, yo, come on, man. You know, we're going to make it work. He was just, he hated Puff. He hated Puff. Then I had Black Rob. He hated Puff. He, 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 not like hate Puff, like, it's just, yo, you be like, man, only thing we got, sometimes you realize, the only thing we got is us. Now, let me tell y'all something. Look at how many bad boy artists had to go to jail. And you'd be like, yo, we, 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 a nigga had to go to jail and was an artist on your label. So the whole time a nigga was in jail, he was in jail 
and they was like, hey, ain't you a uh, bad boy from bad boy? Ain't you from, and people be, ain't you from now? Would you people be, they seeing me, they be like, ain't you, ain't you? And you be like, yo, people had to go to jail that worked with them. Shine. Prison. Loom. Prison. Rob. Prison. Yo, man. I knew I ain't want to have nothing to do with it right when that was going on. I was like, okay, that's my calling. Everybody who's who want to be down with him is going down. And then I looked. And then I was like, yo, I'm starting to see what's going on. What, what I saw was, I was like, Mark, it was like, it's that nobody that's around him that, or even as that's around you, you know, is willing to tell him how to humble himself. How to humble himself. Make sure y'all go get one of these books too. 66 people and 70 people and go get a book. Go, if you want to DM me and you can get one of them autographed, let me know. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I've been saying this right here for so long and people are just now getting on. I done wrote a whole Bible about this. It's like a hip hop Bible. You got to have one. Get two of them. Keep one in your bathroom and then keep one by your living room table. All right, so let's go. I'm like, yo, I've been saying this thing for so long. And then you got you got people. You got people like I got people that's actually people around me. And you be like, like right now, how do I feel? How do I feel right now? Wow. I'm so amazed, man, that God works so fast. Like, even when you might think it's a lifetime and, and it's really not a lifetime, it just happens. So when it happens, you'd be like, man, it's, it's happening. And you, like, everything that people had to go through around you, you, you kind of facing it. Now, let me tell y'all one thing we're going to have to do. All right, this is from me straight to you. And somebody... Today, I was like, yo, you know, I pray for him. And then they was like, why would you pray for him? I be like, because even people, when they, when they, even when they do wrong, you know, people who are sinners, you know, everybody needs prayer. So we can never stop praying for people. And so I, I believe in the power of prayer. So I always pray and I be like, you know what, God, the same way that you can put this brother in that situation Show him a way that he can get out of it. And as long as you know, a lot of people always want to talk about the problem, but they don't never have nothing to say about the solution. Problem is we ain't got no money. Solution is we need to get up and go do something. We collectively as us, they be like, they thought we was just you when it came to you having to go hustle to get something. But anyhow, um, is is when when you going through a thing and you say okay you know I know when it's time for me to give back I know when it's time for me to relax right and um and you be like I know when it's time for me to call friends that I haven't spoken to in a while and say hey you know we haven't we haven't talked I called a friend of mine the other day for the first time in probably about ten years. And I just picked up the phone and called him. He was like, yo, I've been waiting on this day for a long time. And I was like, what you mean? He was like, I've been waiting on you to pick up the phone and call me because I just didn't know if you, we were still friends. Like, I don't know if you remember the things that, you know, our childhood and how, how we grew up together. I was like, yo, I'll never forget that. Or how we grew up like that, I'll never forget that. But sometimes that's just, you know, what I what I feel I got to do to let that friend understand that, you know, like, um, I'm with you. You don't have to reach out to me for me to reach out for us to com com communicate. Some people, if you don't, if you don't pick up the phone sometimes and call somebody, if, if you don't do it, they'll never pick up the phone and call you. And then what happens is you'll never hear from that person ever again in life because they won't pick up the phone and call you. They feel like, yo, you know what? I'm not going to. You be like, yo, why every time I talk to you, I pick up the phone and call you? 
You don't never pick up the phone and call me. You got to look at this kind of stuff. Now, I've been telling Holmes, I said, Holmes, Holmes is Diddy. I said, bro, listen, there's no way in the world you can keep going on in life being this big you and thinking that everybody around you is little. There's no big you and little me. That's what I used to always have to say. Yo, no, there ain't no big you, little me. Ain't none of that. Go get you some what? Man, I'm ain't no big you little me. Just because I come and I want to be an artist on your label don't mean that I got to conform and think like how you think and all of this. I got my own life. I got my own friends to hang out with, do my own thing. You understand? That's just how I go. And we don't like hanging out with you, actually. You understand? Because this is just business. I just want to do business with you, but I don't want to hang out with you. That's how I always was. I was like, I do business with you. I don't want to hang out with you, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like the way y'all party and stuff. I don't like the hours you go out. I don't like none of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't like how y'all get down, period, period. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I was. And I just leave that there. But look. Now, he said, do he need, Do you know, they's like, do he need, you know, don't, why would you pray for him? Everybody needs prayer. So in this time right now, right now, I pray that, yo, let me tell y'all another thing real fast before I get to that. I don't know if Puff is strong enough to go through with like with Bill Cosby and R. Kelly's going through. I'm being honest with you. I don't, I don't think that he's able to do it. And so I really think we need to pray for our brother because you just don't want him to take the other route out. And some people do that. And but when you look at it, you'd be like, how many people took that route out as a result of energy you created? It's like, yo, everything you've done is coming back to you. It's coming back on you. Everything, every way that it go, you got jail, you got probably sitting there thinking about jumping off a building or flying your you be like, damn, man. You be like, yo, it's playing on him with the pilot. It's pilot down. He, he got a pilot. The pilot, uh, is he flying the plane by himself? That's what we want to know. Is he flying the plane by himself? Y'all give me two seconds. Anybody from, let me go let my dogs in. His daughters need, oh, yo, let me give y'all some game. Come on in. All right, go sit down. Now, when it comes to the kids, we don't really like to get the kids all involved in this kind of stuff. And one thing I can say is the look on like Christian's face was, you know, it was very sh like a sh it was a shock to him. And he looked disappointed. And my, my, my message now goes out to the kids because even though no matter what's going on, it doesn't have nothing to do with them. And... I still want them to, you know, no matter what's going on in their life, that, they, you know, we still love them because we still love the kids, man. We love all the kids, regardless if they do wrong or whatever, because, you know, at least when you do wrong, you have a chance to correct it and do right. So we don't give up on people who do wrong. You know, we never gave up on they pops or nothing like that. You know, we don't give up on them. But that, it hurt me to see those kids in that situation. You know, I, I really did. You know, I was like, wow, you know, they don't know what's going on. They they might be confused right now. You know, like they don't probably don't even have nobody to call to, to really get advice from. Like, do they have a relationship with Janice Combs? You know, who had the publishing? You know, did they have a relationship with her? Like, do how are they going to be OK? So. You know, we got to look and be like, ah, you know, even though this is going on and all of this. And we, I seen they was at his house. They went up in there and then they went in. They said, yo, it's going to take us an hour to go through his house because there's so many rooms. And we going, they was just putting everybody in handcuffs and bringing them out. And then I'm like, damn. Then they said that he on a, he on a plane in Antigua or something like that. They said he way down there by uh, where Rihanna from. But. Uh, but uh, what that place is, um, um, y'all know what it is. 
So he out there, Barbados. It's never fun when the rabbit got the gun. Don't say that no more, man. People ain't ready for that. It's never fun when the rabbit got the gun. Yeah. So look, I. Right. So then that's going on there. All right, so let me give y'all another thing that I got going on right now. I hope I hope y'all getting this one right here. All right, check. So I see radio personalities in Atlanta that saying uh, on their site, they like, yo, Puffy House just got raided. And then you'd be like, hold on now. You of all people. Are his, you are his best friend. I came home to Atlanta after I did the book. I could not even get on the radio to get an interview. Ryan Cameron did it one time. Ryan was like, yo, when you come to the studio, come by yourself to sit in the waiting room. And when I tell you to come in and start talking about the book, let's go. Because he knew that as soon as he brought me on air, the PD was going to be in his office like, who is this? Yo, get him off. Get him off. We can't talk talk to him. We can't, we can't be bringing him on the radio. Puffy got a party going on Friday. And you be like, damn, man, I can't even talk about my own book and stuff. So it was really tough. Jay-Z next. No, I don't think Jay-Z next. Because we ain't, we ain't going to be sitting here waiting to see, you know, one of them fall after another one. So we just hope everybody come to an under. You know, I think one of the best things that, that they, they came up with is when they come up with a thing to help all of the hip hop artists from the past to just help them reach out and create a fun a way for them to be able to survive. Because it's hard to be famous and, and be known for like, hanging around somebody or being around and doing music and stuff with somebody like Puff. And then you'd be like, man, man, I don't, I can't even buy no medicine. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, man. You'd be like, man, this shit sucks, man. It's like, I know this, man, come on, man. People be like, I know you, you from Bad Boy for Life. You'd be like, man, look, man. Psst. Man, look, man, I ain't know what was going on back then. You know what I'm saying? You be like, man. And then you you look and you be like, I ain't going to sit here and cry about stuff. I'm going to just keep on popping. And then you just keep doing what you got to do. And then he keep having parties and then your friends keep going to the parties. Everybody be like, oh, man, the party last night was crazy. Oh, Puffy party was sick. Puffy party was sick. You'd be like, well, you'd be sitting here like, man, I ain't been to one of them parties in about shit. I ain't been to one of them parties, man. You'd be like, damn, they be like, man, that shit was off the, he doing, he doing an all white party next Monday or next weekend. He doing an all white party. Oh, word. And you'd be like, damn, they, everybody be getting they all white going to the mall. I got to, you be on the phone with them. Yo, what's going on? Yo, I'm at the mall. What you doing? They're trying to find some all white for the puffy all white party. Fucking going to the puffy all white party. I'm not going to the puffy all white party. I'd be like, man, y'all, y'all better quit chasing around these people like this. Figure out, man, you, you love, sometimes people love. Chasing around other people more than they love themselves. You be like, damn, man, how you gonna keep running? Man, this, this dude right here don't care. Look, Shine Down went to prison. Loon done been to prison. Now, just imagine you're a bad boy artist, you on TV, you rolling with one of the, the hottest dudes in the industry, and then you still doing stuff to take penitentiary chances to possibly risk your life and place yourself in prison. Okay, how many people has that happened to? Uh, 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 all of the bad boy artists, damn near. Only person, let me tell you what I did. I was always, I'm, I'm going to be smart. I'd be like, yo, I'm smart. You understand? I'm smart. That's the reason why I'm Mark. I'm smart. 
So I always knew how, what kind of, I always knew, man, when enough was enough and all of that, man. Like, that's it. Shit ain't working for me. My father already told me when I was young. He told me, Mark, you're not going to be a good drug dealer. Give it up now. And then ever since my father first told me that, and I was like, damn, dad, you don't believe in me? And then he was like, no, nah, I don't believe in you. Because I was like, why? He said, because you're too nice, you're too kind, and people going to take advantage of you, you're going to end up losing. And then so that's exactly what happened whenever I tried to be fast. So then I realized, man, the only way I'm going to be able to get this money is just by being, I'm going to have to use my hands and have a craft, or I'm going to have to use my mind and have a mind skill, or um, I'm going to have to use my hand and my mind because there's no other option. And there it was. See, my hands right now is like this because I, I just painted some, you know, I just built a closet. I'll be building closets and stuff, custom closets, custom custom woodwork all the way around. I'm a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. Let's move on, though. So I'm like, yo, don't talk about this dude if you was his friend and didn't want to be my friend because you was his friend. And then now all of this is going on. You want to talk about it because, like, Young Jock, I better not hear Young Jock say nothing about what's going on in the news right now with Diddy. Because he better say he did not promote it the same way he said about my book. Surprising. I'm like, damn. You know, Mace, did y'all ever notice how none of them ever speak about my book or nothing about me? Mace. Never speaks about me. I love Loon. As on that's that's like a brother. That's like my brother. But he don't speak. He don't. We don't speak a lot. But I love Loon though, cause that's I just always have. That's my brother. We got too much in common. I love Loon. So then you got Rob. Me and him gelled up. G Dep, he's on his way home. Ooh, the deputy's coming home, y'all. So we might can go do blast off. The deputy's coming home. Craig Mack, we had a good relationship. Good, very good friendship, man. Um, Faith Evans, awesome relationship. Awesome. I still talk to her every now and then. Like I, I call Faith just to say hello after every now and then. And and, you know, just make sure I keep in, you know, we stand in, 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 in touch. And then everything around Faith from, man, <laughs> man, from Todd, my man out there from L.A., Todd, um, Dougie D. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people that still stay in touch with me, Liz Bo. You know what I'm saying? Um, but anyhow... Um, a lot of people they 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 going in to talk about him now. They like man, Puffy. They be like, yo, ain't he your best friend? The other day you was just hanging out with him at the party and all white and stuff, and then now you got something. You be like, damn, you wanna, you know what I'm saying? Come on, don't do that. Y'all don't slander your partner like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I know I know how it is when the world has turned on you real fast. So you could be no, you could be on top of the world one minute, and the next thing you know, you're gonna be on the bottom. And then when you're at the bottom, you're gonna be like, damn, you gotta be like, yo, I got so much respect, they're gonna help me get back up. So everybody be like, how did you fall? How did you fall? You be like, I don't know. I just was up there, and then I came down, and then I just fell. They were like, come on, come on, go, go, go back, go back, go back. And you be like, okay. They be like, go, go, go up the steps, go up. And then you be like, okay. They be like, hey, you, you just, yeah, yeah, keep on going. And then next thing you know, you be back on top again. You be like, yeah, I thought y'all was going to knock me down from the top. <laughs> you can't knock me down because everybody that's on the ladder coming up loves me. They going to let me get by. See, they don't like that energy when you got that energy, man. This right here was supposed to happen in 80 years. It's happening right now. Come on, man. Everybody had to go to jail, bro. A lot of people, man, we lost lives over this, man. Come on, man. And we be sitting here just enjoying life, drinking our 
wines and all of our liquors and things like that and promoting our sins and things like that. And good gosh, I'm not wishing bad on nobody, but oh, man, you, anybody who just do that in front of the almighty, you cannot do that in front of the almighty. Call it whatever you want to call it. You do not do that. You do not put the other people before you put your own happiness. It's whack. You putting other people, you idolizing people who doing, you be like, man, we sitting here thinking that this is a fan and this is a hero. You be like, and you thought this was a hero? What did he do heroic? And this is your hero. This is your hero. Look at your hero now. Huh. Come on, man. Look at your hero. <sighs> right, man. Cassie was scared of Diddy for 10 years and Oh, you can't, I don't know, man. It's just like, yo, you're up all day. Chef Bugs, what's going on? Man's filling the building. Oh, one, two, three. All right, so uh, Cassie, I don't know. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. He said, what about D1? What about D1? D1. D1. I had a, I got a partner right that one day, <laughs> we was on tour somewhere, and Puff was like, yo, Mark, your partner keep calling up to the office, threatening me, talking about he'll knock me out, all kind of shit. He was like, I was like, I was like, yeah. And I was like, you getting the messages, though, right? He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, but you got to let him know, man. I got people who fight. I, that's people who fight all the time. I said, look, what I'm going to not do is let him know that I'm telling you this. Are you telling me that? Because if I if I go back and tell him that you said that, hey man, we ain't gonna be able to do a lot of things that we be doing. Like we ain't going. First of all, we ain't going to L.A. That's over. We're not going ready to go to Atlanta. Too tough like that. That's over. We just gonna be having to just hang out in New York. Cause you 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 kind of like offending all of the niggas who who I know that actually have some say so in a lot of things in life. D one has always been someone who has some say-so, even in my career. If y'all read the book, everybody get the book. I call him D-Wayne. In the book, his name is D-Wayne because I ain't know how people was going to feel about me putting their name in the book. So then I said, yo, and then and then I changed his name to D-Wayne. And then um, he, he called me. He was like, yo, why, why did you change my name in your book to D. Wayne? I said, because if I would have said D. One, then you would have been upset. He was like, nah, I want you to go back and edit the book and put D. One. <laughs> but his name was his name in the book is D. Wayne. I changed some names in the book, man, just because I just didn't want to have people ask me like, why? Why, why, why? You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people who I did talk about in the book, a lot of people is just, for some reason, they just don't, they, they, they just don't talk to me. They just don't talk to me. I never did nothing to, except for just do the best I could. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to humble myself and, and watch everybody go to the all-white party. I had to go home. You know what I'm saying? My girl might have wanted to go to the all-white party, but she was like, I'm going to stay at home with you. And then I was like, thank you, baby, for making me feel special. And and we'd just be sitting back, and you'd be like, man. Then everybody be like, oh, the all-white party was crazy. And you'd be like, damn. And then you'd be like, wow. And then you'd just be like, well, let me go to work. And then, bye-bye, babe. Mm -hmm. Give her a kiss and go. And then you'd just be like, Wow. It was a lot of that going on in life every day, waking up, just trying to, you always just got to figure out something you got to do to keep yourself grounded every day you wake up. All right, so we talking about that. Now, look, the documentary on the rim shop, I mean, on, on not the rim shop, the freak Nick. Hey, yo, if you watch the documentary on the freak Nick, put a 100, type a 100 real fast so I can see who watched it. 
Because I got a couple of questions. I got a couple of questions. The D Boom Bap Audio King is in the building. It's one of the world's greatest producers. Everybody follow the Boom Bap Audio King. Okay, we got a 100 coming up from Chalk Lady. What's up, Chalk Lady? Baby, baby Face Loaster, 103rd. What's going on, Baby Face Loaster? Yeah. All right, one, two, three. Yeah, Styles E, okay. All right. I got you. I got to look at it. It's been in school. Yo, come on. Bugs, you lived the um, Freak Nick. So you only come on, Bugs. They don't. They don't get it. They they don't get it. Now look, everybody putting the one hundred. Everybody putting the one hundred. Now here's what here's here's what my thing is right here. In order to do a story about the Freaknik, you had to have been an official part of the Freaknik. That means you had that. You know, when or during the Freaknik. If you was riding down Peachtree, you had to have at least five, six, or seven, eight, or ten more cars with the tags all from your town. Whether you from Minnesota or whether you from Alabama, whatever, all of y'all got to team up and come to the Freak Nick and roll down the joint with your cars. And you rolling down the joint with your cars. And then you got a hotel over there, over there, and all of this is jumping. It's the Freak Nick. So then now by the time you just take one little ride down Peachtree, you be done loaded up your car with all kind of women. You be like, okay, here it is. We ain't going to keep riding around in traffic. We finna go back to the pool. They hear the pool because a lot of these girls was coming down here for the Freak Nick and they ain't even had no room. Nope, a lot of these are some of y'all mamas and stuff too, so let's, let's be respectful of how we talk about this. But uh, the Freak Nick started off with me and your mamas and them parents and stuff like that. And that was our little time to get away and have a little fun when we was young. Like when people used to go to Daytona Beach and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, Pensacola and all of that. Before it was Miami, they had uh, 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 some spring, spring break was in a, a what? Um, Daytona? You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, some of them, them is like, so Freaknik, when you mention your mom, Freaknik to your mom, and they say, so mom, have you ever been to the Freaknik? And if she ever get caught, <coughs> start doing, <coughs> shit. <coughs> she be, you be like, mom, what happened? She be like, what the hell kind of question is that? You be like, I'm just wondering, because, you know, the Freaknik was probably, it was popping around your time. You never been to Freaknik? She, <coughs> she be like, Phew. She don't even want to tell you that you a product of the freak. She don't, nigga, I met your daddy on Freak Nick. 1993. Freak Nick downtown Atlanta, the Hyatt Hotel. Hotel lobby. I was down in the lobby looking for a way to get into the goddamn ballroom because goddamn Raheem the Dream was finna the... Well, you'd be like, what? Your mama got a story. Your mama got a story to tell. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, so look. Freak Nick. They did the Freak Nick. But, all right, let me give y'all some Freak Nick things. Detroit used to come down here with so many cars. You would see that, that Michigan tag, Michigan, Michigan. Michigan, they you be like, yo, these dudes from Michigan is getting money. That's how you could tell who was getting money. These dudes from Minnesota is getting money. You be like, these dudes from Atlanta is getting money. Wisconsin, getting money. Chicago, getting money. Oh, my gosh. Because everybody would come down here deep. With all of their cars. So, everybody who want to say something about Freak Nick, what we want you to do is post a picture of you in front of the car that you was riding around in Freak Nick to make you very important during the Freak Nick with your crew. So, that means you're going to have to have your team, all of the people you came with, all of that. We ain't including no, um, no artists or nothing like that. No labels, like if we talking about this, your straight home love, 
like what you mean to the city, like, you know, how you help people in the city, because it's a lot of people that live in the city that don't help people in the city. They've been doing. And when you see these things that's going on in, in Brother Love's life, it's a few other people in this world that have the same exact identical characters. And I can only say that, brother, everybody has a chance to straighten it up, man. Straighten it up. Realize where you came from, what high school you came from. How you know me? Why are you afraid of me? Huh? Why are you afraid of me? Come on, don't be afraid of me. Because I talk, I wrote a book about your friend. A lot of people, radio, I wrote a book about your friend. I'm like, damn, but I was your friend before he was your friend, and but then you not now you not my friend because I talked about your hero. I don't have no heroes. My heroes was always my friends. My heroes were always my friends. I lost my heroes. I don't know what made my heroes stop believing in me. I went to Lakeshore High. Lancer. See, that's what I'm trying to tell. I'm like, I'm, I didn't go to West Clayton. Mm -mm. All right, let me ask everybody right now. Let's do a quiz. If you're from Atlanta, if you're from Atlanta and you know about this, tell me what school did Jermaine Dupree go to? What high school did Jermaine Dupree go to? Let me see who knows. Anybody on live right now that's with me right now, tell me what school he went to. What high school? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll give it a second, but... M.D. Collins? Bam, no. Bam, no. Bam, no. I have no clue. Nobody has a clue. If I'm not mistaken, Jermaine Dupree went to North Clayton. He went to North Clayton. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Still a good dude. But he don't really know about Red Oak. We want to go back to Red Oak. We want to go back to uh, White City. Roosevelt Highway over there. People don't know where I really went up like what I really meant to in this in Atlanta. Everybody in Atlanta thought that I was from New York or something because but I, I went to high school here in Atlanta. I went with, with all, you know, shout out to Highland uh, Bear. G. Rick. Eddie. Fat boy. True. It's my man. He used to do the strip clubs. He died. I forget my man's name, man. But anyhow, man, I, there's so many people that I can think of that, that I can come back with. That come back from that time right there. Skip. It's my man. Uh, yeah, it's a lot, man. What are your thoughts on the raid? Yo, they raided his joint, bro. They, they if they raided if they raided it, that means they have a reason to do what they doing. That means like, yo, it's really serious. And but the thing that you got to pay attention to is when they raided his crib, he was not there. He was on the airplane somewhere, flying on his airplane with just him and his pilot. Just him and his pilot. He probably took. He probably took all of the all of the movies, sex tapes, all of the, the the tapes he had against people sleeping with people. He must have took all of them and said, "Look, man, we're ready to take these to Antigua and put them in a bonfire." He went and burned the evidence. What was the evidence? The evidence was probably some tapes and stuff of what was going on and stuff. 
right? Oh, man. Where else would he be going under and out of flying out of to Antigua and all of that stuff for right now? What would he be doing? For what? Just him and his pilot talking about he's stressed. He knew it was coming. They told him this morning, they said the same way they told him that the World Twin Towers was ready to get hit. Go down there and take pictures of it right now because tomorrow is not, you're not going to have ever have a chance to do it again. His ass took us right on down there and we went and took them goddamn pictures by the World Twin Towers and then the same time, the next morning, them joints went down. This nigga knew. I'm telling you, he knew. It's amazing. He knew. Let's go get them pictures. Why? Because you're a part of that system. You're a part of that system. The same system that said, hey, we are the same ones that built you. and We're the same ones that will destroy you. We are your gods. And then he was like, I want to change my religion. They was like, there's no way in the world you can change your religion. You believe in us. And then he was like, no, I don't. And then they said, okay. Got to watch who you believe in. Got to watch who you believe in. All right, but look, again, you can go buy a badge or something, too. They got those things called badges on here. If you're a friend of mine, you just want to support the cause because I just feel good. I just feel like I just want to be able to just win, 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 no matter what. Life has been crazy, man, because you got to really just, just, just make it happen. Y'all seen Keith Murray? Y'all seen Keith Murray? I was like, them the same shoes he was doing the show with? Man, that's my boy right there, Keith Murray. Man, let's just... Man, I think he gonna be good though. He always gonna be good, but wow, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta really look out for each other, y'all. That's all I can really say. Yeah, we gotta really look out for each other, man, and um, we gotta just make sure we always remind each other that we 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 loved and that we are important to each other. Like you do have a purpose. Don't never be confused and think like you don't matter. Like, you do matter. Like, if something was to happen to you, I would miss you. I do love you. Some things that we don't, some people don't feel that. And they feel like, you know, if anything happens to me, nobody cares. And and, and it's a lonely world that you live in. But you'd be like, yo, you still got to find that love. And you got to find that strength. So, Tony Gaines is in the building. Tony Gaines, an official or is that College Park, Tony Gaines? Or you East Point or College Park? Let me know real fast, Tony Gaines. Because a lot of people just don't understand how, how far it goes back. You see this clown, Charleston White, joking on Gilly. Yo, I don't condone, condone, don't joke on the kids. And don't joke on the kids. And we, we you know, even with, with what's going on right now, I pray that Puffy's kids are okay, you know, that, that somebody's there for them to, because I know they're confused right now. And I kind of like know them, so I'd be like, yo, I'm not going to joke on them. I'm not, I, I hope that, you know, everything is, I'm sure that everything is going to be okay for them, but I'm sure at these times, it's a pretty embarrassing moment to see things and you be like, wow, man, like, People always said that one day this kind of stuff was going to come to someone who I love so much, but I never saw it because I thought that everything that he gave me was a blessing, but I never realized that it was a blessing and a curse at the same time. Now, what do I have to do in order to get the walk? Nah, Keith Murray, Keith Murray's okay. We, we we look at him as long as you see him. I ain't going to say, you know, well, Keith Murray is enjoying doing whatever Keith, Keith Murray is enjoying Keith Murray life. I swear, that's, and that's it. You know what I mean? And 
He go do his show, go do what he need to do. Got his crowd participation. Keith Murray is Keith Murray. There's one thing I can tell you. Oh, hold up. Tony Gann says CP. In case y'all don't know what that means. That means College Park. It's College Park. Yeah. Yo, when they when they come for you. People, um, when they come for you, they're coming for you. And what y'all got to look at when they come for you is just, let me tell you what it's like. Let me tell you what it's like so a lot of y'all can really feel it. You got people who be like, they make excuses for everything that you can think of. You be like, what happened to this? Oh, this what happened to that. Well, well, then if that happened to that, then why didn't you do this to protect that and stop it from happening? Because when I was supposed to do that, that's when so-and-so didn't do this. And then you'd be like, why is everything that you saying has something to do with you protecting yourself instead of understanding that it's just something that happened? And then the only thing that we can do is just prevent it from happening again. But you still want to keep going back and forth to tell me how you didn't have nothing to do with it, how it wasn't your fault. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yo, it already happened. That's one thing that we do understand that the only thing that we do need to figure out now is how to not have it happen again. So you got those people who just always just keep avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it. And you'd be telling them, like, I'm telling you what's happening. But they just don't want to know like you know. And then they be lying to yourself. They be like, I don't really think that. You're smart enough to see the truth. And you be like, wow. And you got to sit back and let them play that game with you. It's been happening. But the only thing that we can do is just say, man, look, man. He could, you could have avoided all of this, bro. If he, he could have avoided all of this, if he would have just under, if he would have just showed up to Craig Mack funeral or Black Rob funeral, just if he would have just been more like a friend, then like you can never be so much of a celebrity that you can't attend a funeral. And now look, look at R. Kelly fighting over his commissary. Man. I don't think Holmes got enough in himself to stand going to prison. It's not going to happen. He's not the kind that can do it. So now we got to pray for him. Brother Diddy. Please take this as a learning lesson. Understand that you can always get yourself back right. Just by listening to your heart, believing in in love. Try to turn it around. Brother Diddy. Brother Love. (laughs) We support you, man. As wrong as you may have been to people, we're going to support you. I'm going to be like, I hope you're all right, man. Do not do nothing to harm yourself, bro. Don't do nothing to harm yourself, man. And I hope that this dude really don't go to prison. He cannot go to prison. He's not the kind of dude that can do that. So let's pray for the brother, man. I'm telling y'all. He can't do it. Some people can't some people can't sit in a room for ten years straight, fifteen years straight. R. Kelly been in a room sitting in a, a cell for I don't know how many years straight. No stays, no airplane, no big house, no nothing. Just straight in a cell. Some people can't do that. Some people can't even imagine going broke before they go broke, they'll kill themselves. That's why so much suicide on Wall Street. He can't go to jail. So let's let's pray that that right there is not something that happens. 
just honest. I could I could talk about anything and and wish I can't wish nothing like that upon the brother because I don't want to see him go to jail. He's not cut for jail. We just want him to learn. But if don't make a don't make don't make a um, don't make a um, an example out of him in the wrong way. We want him to learn, but we don't want y'all to just 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 destroy him like that. I don't want to see that. I'd rather y'all just get the book and leave the book. Let the book be the best thing at the end of that. Don't We don't need to keep getting deeper in all of these allegations because I know that they coming man, out the woodwork. Every female who done, um, done, done had group sex or sex with multiple guys um, in a studio location especially around celebrity or high-famed individuals, oh, they all coming for them. They be like, oh, they be like, man, I'm telling you, it be people, mama, they be like, ma, what you going to do? They be like, your mom be like, look, I'm finna sue. Goddamn the Sugar Hill Gang. You be like, ma, how you going you gonna to shoot the Sugar Hill Gang? Because one day they was on tour. And, uh, all of them was in the room liking me. And uh, they gave me some Spanish fly. And uh, I, I didn't know what was going on. Next thing you know, you trying to wonder why your name is Lil Mike. Because you little Master G, son. You be like, wow. Wow, this stuff been going on for a long time. Same people who was in the freak nick, same people. Why you think people, what's the difference between people going to the freak nick and the people going to the freak party? Same freaks. Fuck, it's no difference. Some people that f- drove themselves all the way down here from where they live at to come down here to ride down the street and be a freak. And freak nick. And then, you know why they called it a freak nick? Because... Everybody was eating sandwiches and stuff. Ain't nobody had no money for no hotel. They were like, man, last resort, we brought sandwiches. So what we're going to do is we're going to eat out the trunk. They'd be a team. Everybody coming in a team. 100 girls came from, 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 from Ohio. You'd be like, damn, there's 15 of them. Where y'all stand at? They, he, he, he. So y'all got a hotel? He, all the hotels was booked. And when we got here, we realized we ain't got no place to stay. You'd be like, mm, well, I, I got an extra room over there to hide it. That, you know, you do. And the next thing you know, psh, you pop it. Only thing you got to do, you just got to go get you about five hotels. Just load them up. This is what the freaks was doing. Diddy landed in Africa. Who he going to see in Africa? Akon? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to tell you. For everybody who know me, that ain't never really gave me a good shout out or nothing like that, man. That had an opportunity. You on the TV, on the radio. You ain't talk about my book. You ain't just. You ain't talk about me. You did. You just said that. Um, you just didn't support me and all of this, man. Look here, middle finger. Middle finger, you. There it is, just like that. There it is, man. Ain't ain't no love, no love lost, none. No love gained, no shame to it. We just don't eat off the same plate. That's just what it is. So do you think Diddy has money buried? It ain't no sense in having money buried and then you be like, I can't eat, still can't touch it. Not unless you dig an underground tunnel from in a cell and then you have it go tap into your money that you got buried. Then you grab the money and keep on digging and end up somewhere like Johannesburg or something like that with your money. It's a great time to take a vacation, man. I, I wish when the feds raid my house, I was in Africa. I'd be, I'd be like, man, look, man. 
how the hell did the feds rob come in your crib and you was in Africa? I'd be, I'd be the mad ass fed. How the hell did you know? How the hell did you know? You'd be like, somebody on the inside has been giving out information, classified information. So the goddamn inside is snitches. The inside is snitches. <laughs> they giving up the information. Hey, you know, uh, on Tuesday, they finna go into your spot. So I'm just letting you know right now, nigga, if you got anything in there that you don't want them to have, you need to get rid of that shit now. They be like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? You, nigga, you better put that shit on your motherfucking private jet. Take that shit all the way to the, to the Afghanistan over there where the war is, nigga, and throw that shit out there on ground 18. You know what I'm saying? Let that shit burn the rebels, nigga, because they looking for you. Be like, oh, shit. You mean to tell me all my private sex tapes? That I had with all of these girls that when they was coming to my house, I was recording it. Yeah. And the boys? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. What? What would you do? You're acting like y'all wouldn't do this. What would you do? What would you do? All right. If you was him, what would you do? If I was him... I just pray. I be like, Lord, please deliver me from this, man. Please deliver me. I just pray. So all you can do, man, is pray. All right, but uh, pray and turn itself in. Yeah. You be like, man, all of this stuff that's going on, all of these people. Let me tell you what you don't want to be a part of is the people or the people who who people was doing whatever that these people was doing. Like I'm telling you, anytime a female has sex with two dudes and they thought that this shit was cool, they coming back saying something. So, females is thinking that a lot of them is thinking like a lot of when they did a lot of the things that they did that that they was forced into doing them, and really you wasn't they wasn't really forced into doing them. it was just part of what they wanted to do in order to be part of the life, like to be hanging around those certain crowds. And man, it'd be all kind of stuff. You'd be performing on stage and wimp females would be throwing a shirt up like this. They'd be like this. Oh, you'd be like, wow. You'd be like, look. You'd be like, what? She just showed me a titty. And you'd be like, wow. So then after the show, you'd be like, I'm going down there to get that girl with them titties. You'd be like, looking for, hey, you, give me with them titties. Cause that's just what you. Cause that's just what the business was. She be like, she be like, where's the after party? You be like, over there. So then you know that's just what the life was. So I don't know. So a lot of them females is coming back now and being like, yo, they were forced into doing things. Like you be like, damn, like the when you 16 years old and 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 you having sex. With somebody that's a grown ass person and you ain't had no driver's license, so how did you get there? Did you get dropped off? Like, and then you gotta also look at these people who be putting their kids out there like that too. So, some of these people, we gotta look at a whole bunch of wrong stuff that's going on now. Lady got in trouble for trying to sell her kid for $500 the other day on the news. $500, she was gonna sell her whole kid. And then the people who bought the kid for $500. Said this motherfucker was bad as shit, so they wanted to get their money back. The bitch didn't want to give them their money back. Didn't want to take her child back. They wouldn't turn to herself. They wouldn't turn her in. Must she sold us a defective child. What was wrong with the child? Motherfucker wouldn't stop crying. Oh, well, what happened? This motherfucker just sitting there whining all day because, wow. Why you think she whining? Because when people be on crack and they pregnant and stuff, their kids be crying all the time and stuff. They're miserable ass kids. 
Why? Because their mama was on crack when she was pregnant. Well, all of that's going on when the freak nick was going on. When the freak nick was going on, oh, crack was popping. Oh, yeah. So a lot of these people who was coming to the freak nick was people who had money from coming from where they come from. That's old crack. So crack was popping a lot of drugs. Detroit. Crack. This is when crack was doing it. You, you be like, you had a slab, man, cookie. You be like, yo, I got them cookies. You know what I'm saying? I be sitting in the kitchen, palms itching, while my nigga cooked by the quarter chicken, waiting for the federalities to come raid, because all a nigga want to do is get paid. I be sitting in the kitchen, palms itching, while a nigga cooked by the quarter kitchen, chicken. Waiting for the federalities to come raid. Yeah, y'all don't know about that song. Yeah, that's what rap used to be. That was around the freak nick. When you used to get the money from that, then you go into your shoebox and you be like, yo, we're going to go down to the freak nick. And then we're going to take, you go take the cars and all of that. And then you go down to the freak nick. And then you go down there and you ball out. And then that's all, but she, we ain't had no gold um, chains and diamonds and all of that, no Rolexes and all of that. So the only thing you used to have was your car. If you do a documentary about the Freak Nick and you came to Atlanta and you don't know about the rim shop, you did not attend the Freak Nick. You was just doing something. If you did not go to the rim shop or mention the rim shop and what the, what the importance of that shop was to Atlanta, you did not go to the freak thing. Now, I'm going to chime out of here. I need everybody to go get two books. DM me if you need a book. You need a book. Trust me, it's like a Bible. It's not just a book about, it's, a, it's going to tell you a story uh, the same way. It's like a modern day Bible. What happened, the same thing that happened in the Bible is the same thing that happened right now. But the thing is, I'm the unknown disciple. <laughs> watch the book of Clarence too. Go watch that. It's pretty dope. I'm going to sign out of here. Tony Gaines. I'm going to sign out of here. I hate to leave y'all, but I love to stay. But this the this the most people people this the most people ever came into my life. Can y'all keep coming back when y'all see me go live, please? I be wanting to go live. I be wanting to holler at you. All right, y'all pray for Puff, man. We don't want him to do nothing to himself. He's a jumper. You just heard it. He's a jumper. Pray for them. All right? Leave all of the kids out. No funny comments about none of the kids. They got arrested. Them in handcuffs. I don't like none of that. I won't respond on none of that kind of stuff because I believe in the kids, man. We, they ain't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So we leave that there. Much, much love to them. Let's get through this. Let's all pray and come together and just make sure that everything is okay. In God's name. Curry finna roll out of here. Hold on, man. 48, eight more people came on. This is dope. Hey, yo, can y'all buy a badge or a book or something? Buy a book. It's on my, you can DM me and get the autograph joint. Or um, you can go into the, um, go to Amazon and just get a book or something. I want to sell books. That's what I did the book for. I been did the book. Everybody just acting like the book is brand new. The book is, I wrote the book in 2009. And it's better than what you're seeing right now. Only thing that's not better, it's not really because it is good though. But wait, I, it ain't no, man, they got some new stuff coming out now. This is new and improved stuff. This shit is, new stuff is, whoo, it's killing the old stuff. The new stuff, oh my gosh. That new school, oh man. What's the title of the book? 
Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burnt the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. And the link is in my bio. You can order the um you can order one f I, I send you the um autograph joint from the bio. You go over to the um Young McFly is in the building. Young McFly is in the building. Everybody follow Young McFly. And if you go to LA or something like that, he'll probably give you a tour of the town. Cause he is young McFly, the flyest guy, the flyest guy. Hey, let's go. What up, brother? So look, everybody get get a book. It's one or two books. Is is it one or two? It's one book. I only wrote one book. I said I ain't writing no more books until the first book finally get the attention that it needs. Now this, I'm gonna have to do a new book now. Nah, you the realest ever. Love always. That's right, McFly. I'm going to have to do a new book now because all of this new information and stuff, it's a whole new book. For the people who didn't get the old book, you got to get the old book first, though. It's in the bio. Let's go right into my, my, my um, go into my profile and then look at that LinkedIn and then either, or you could DM me if you want the book autograph or if you just want to order from Amazon, go order from there. Just get a book, though. Tell two people, two, two more people to get a book, too. Because what happens, I've been trying to sell this book to make, you know, I was like, yo, you know what? I'm just going to put this book and sell the book and let the book actually make the difference. And I put the book out there and the book been selling. But the more that you buy the book, the more it really helped me get back to where I've been trying to get to. And it's been working. So I appreciate everybody for all of the support. That book has been going. Keep keep getting them, please. And And I ain't been getting no bad reviews about them. Because it's like a Bible, I'm trying to tell you. It's not like a you reading. It's like you reading a good story. You're getting to know a whole bunch. Play the game, famo. Yeah. Okay. Did he do it? You called it. Yeah. Yup. So. Yeah. Young McFly. All right. Any old any old heads he ran with and the book still here. Yeah. We're not old heads though. That's why I I don't be understanding like what they mean. Cause I don't know. Like when people be calling me unk and all that, I be I be like, I'm not I'm not unk, man. I'm younger than you. I'm I'm working hard, man. I'm out ready to go climb up some stairs and all that. One thing about Mark, you're going to speak your truth. Yes, you're right about that. Because if you don't speak, if you don't speak your truth, it make your breath stink. That's why a lot of people be having bad breath because they don't be speaking the truth. But I'm going to get ready to chime out of here because I got to get ready to eat and get up in the morning and go to work. And one thing I can tell you. Is I had to adapt to being to, to a different lifestyle. I had to say, I went from being all the way on stage and being in front of people and performing to having to go to people's house and paint their walls and fix their stairs and build them a deck and, you know, change their window and do other things. And then I was like, yo, it, it, sometimes you feel good. Like when I would meet, a old lady or something like that, and then I'd be over there doing some work at the house, and I hear saying, "Well, I can't afford this," so I'd be like, "Well, what else do you want done?" She'd be like, "Well, I do want new lights, and I do want this." I said, "Well, today's your lucky day. Everything that you want done, just let me know, and I'm gonna sit here and do it." And I would do it, and I would do it because I said I'm making her happy, and I'm able to do it, and I don't have to charge people for everything that I know how to do. So if I'm over here and I see she's struggling, she's an elderly person, and I want to see her feel happy about her house. I want her to smile. So I'll be like, whatever you want me to do. And then I would sit there and work for these people. And sometimes, sometimes you would never know, and you can, you can run up on more money. They'd be like, well, I got money. I can pay you. 
or sometimes you run up on, you don't get no money. But then the times that you do get the money is the times when you say, you know, I had to do something for free in order to get something gifted. So I had to put this work out there so that maybe God would come back and bless me with this work. Like it was one dude. Let me tell y'all this one real fast. I'm gonna let y'all go. It's one dude. I sold him a house. He's supposed to give me ten thousand dollars, and then he didn't want to give me ten thousand. He gave me five thousand. So then I was like, "Well, as long you let me work on the house, I'm fine. I can make whatever it is that I'm missing just off of working." And then whatever it was came up with an excuse for me to not work on the house. And I sold him one of my best friend's houses, and it was just rare. And then so I never got a chance to work on the house, but I was able to go and I, I, I needed some work. And I was like, I went up on this site that I saw people working and I was like, hey, do y'all need some help? And they was like, what do you do? And I was like, I do a lot of stuff. I do And they was like, you do punch out, you do finish. I said, yeah, I'm a carpenter. And then I went in and I did that's why I was doing those closets. I did one, two closets. They was like, we like the way you work. Then I wind up doing six. Then, 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 then next thing you know, I was able to find myself something that I can do for at least two years without worrying about what I have to do. Only thing I have to do is sit and do what I love to do is just build stuff with wood. But it took for somebody to just not believe in me in order for me to go out there and find somebody else who did believe in me. Hold on. Come. Who locked the door this time? Probably me. I'm the only one in the house, but I'm on live. Don't come in here and let people hear that. Hey, so listen. Let me get off live, everybody. Y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all later. Kings of Carmen, it's your boy, Reggie Curl, you know what I'm saying? This is my cousin, Troncho, you know what I'm saying? We coming, by. You know, I know me, old f***ing from the lambskin condoms. I ain't even want my man to eat my because I eat meat from Aldi's. The f*** wrong with you? Aldi's, you shouldn't eat this. We don't know what the f*** that meat is. No! Prison. That's not the, the part about it. The part about it is he had the audacity to ask me why I ain't helping us. It ain't no point. Both of us get. I step up, look him right in his eyes. He go to pat me down. Twenty dollars, homeboy. I'm like, <laughs> no sir. Punch line, punch line, punch line. Yeah. Yeah.